All right, all right. We are back for another Infinite Wisdom interview series. And guess what? She's back. She's <laughs> back. The Wisdom interview series. <laughs> we are just ecstatic to have her here. Uh, Anya Hawama from, uh, well, you've actually, you've seen us post a lot of things, of air, a lot of different things that we're doing with her. Um, right now, Maxima, uh, our Quantum Maxima is going on now and she mm. just took some time out of that busy schedule hey to be with us so anya thank you so much for joining us again and uh we are just elated to have you i'm getting a lot of comments on uh, on the pages about uh people are excited to be on this interview you know i i think we should just jump right in on uh, uh quantum maxima what is going on Let's go. First off, thank you so much for having me again. It's always a pleasure to serve your community as well. Yes, Quantum Maxima. So Quantum Maxima, I'll give a little backstory of how it came to me. Sure. So I had a fantastic start of this year like so so freaking good like I wrote a new book I was traveling I almost sold an 88 million dollar house I'm not a realtor <laughs> like, <laughs> this is manifesting in my life I had a fantastic start of the year the highs were really 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 high but my lows this year were really really freaking low so um, June, I May, I ended all of my coaching contracts. I had a year-long coaching school that I ended up, ended that because I was going to be on book tour all of June. I just came out with a brand new book. I was in between Vegas, LA, New York, uh, Costa Rica, all for the book tour. And like I was on a Times Square billboard, which was amazing as well for the book. It was like the highs were really, really high. So all of June, I spent traveling, meeting people, networking, seeing myself on a billboard, 80 foot Anya. Like it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then I came back from book tour in June and I logged into my website because like I was offline for an entire month. I logged in and I lost everything like every content creator's worst nightmare i lost my website i lost 300 pieces of video content that i've ever created my entire career i've lost 40,000 emails that i've been collecting over the ten, last 10 years and i'm like what the heck is going on so i spent all of Ju all of july trying to retrieve everything back and all of august troubleshooting i ended up getting my website back i ended up getting maybe 15 of the 15000 of those emails back i ended up getting most of the videos back but they're super low quality and like i spent all of august just troubleshooting like why isn't this button working anymore why isn't this working like what is going on this used to work, this used to work, like what is going on? So uh, September came around and I had a complete mental breakdown, <laughs> like one of the lowest, the lowest months of my life. I haven't had this much anxiety in a very long time, like since my early 20s when I was suffering with really bad anxiety and I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat. I was also traveling in Portugal for three weeks and, and like one thing after another, after another, and I just wanted to stay in bed all day. And I'm like, what the heck am I doing with my life? Like I went down this spiral of like, one, what am I doing with my life? Is this even my direction? Should I be doing this anymore? Do I want to be coaching anymore? Am I a good enough coach? Like this crazy spiral that we all put ourselves in if things are going wrong. Like I'm sure your audience understands it well, but the idea is like getting yourself out of that spiral. How do we get ourselves out of that spiral? So end of September, I was hosting an event to master your mind and Gary actually spoke at that event. And, and a day before the event, I'm like, do I even want to host this? Like, is this my, is this what I want to do moving forward? I'm not sure. I don't know exactly what direction I should be going. I don't know what guidance I need to have. I just don't know. But um, I logged in and there was like 600 people signed up for this event. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm hosting this event. I can't let down 600 people. If it was five people, I was like, okay, fine, whatever. But I can't let down 600 people. So I ended up hosting the event. But nothing nothing like the event was fantastic like every day just kept getting better and better and better it was such a great event i brought all my energy during the event day one of the event i had a beautiful hypno session with one of my speakers 
And the second day of the event, like my energy just started getting on fire. Like it was amazing. Day two of the event, I had a beautiful coaching call with my mentor. And she's like, okay, well, all of this already happened. We can't go back. We can only move forward. You can keep patching band-aids on this or do something completely different. What do you want to do moving forward? And what the way that she said that like really stuck with me. And I was like, you're right. It happened. Okay, what am I doing moving forward? So that day I sat in meditation. I turned off my phone and no one talked to me. Like, I don't want to talk to anyone. Tur completely turned everything off and looked inward because that is the way that I connect to the divine. I connect to my higher source, like turn everything off, all the distractions. And I can sit in meditation for hours on hours on hours, just channeling and allowing source to talk through me. So I was in deep meditation. And during the meditation, two things came to me. The first thing that came to me was, I am not that same person that I was portraying myself online to be. I am not this airy fairy version of myself that's like in the cosmos. Like I am an embodied goddess now. The way that I teach is very different. The way that I talk is different. The way that I portray myself, the person that I am is completely different than what I've been showing online over the last two years. And everyone needs a little rebrand. So the first thing that came to me was one, I need a complete rebrand. Like I am not that same person anymore. And it was really funny, actually, that evening, I went for a walk in my neighborhood. I was in Chicago at the time. I'm in Columbia now. I went on a walk in my neighborhood and they painted all the fire hydrants white that day. And I was like, oh, fire hydrants even got a rebrand. If fire hydrants got a rebrand, <laughs> oh, <laughs> rebrand. <laughs> a little subtle awesome. side, like, hey, I like everyone needs a rebrand once in a while. Like it is yeah. okay. My website's also like three, four years old. Like, of course I need a rebrand. Of mm -hmm. course. And the second thing that came to me was, and this has been coming up for me over the last year, but it really came in strong during that session, collaboration versus competition. We are in the rise of the new earth. We are rising in spirituality where the new earth is very spiritual focused. We're not in this one person for ourselves like it is not the Anya show anymore how can we merge this together and all rise together as a collective consciousness how can we do this the universe kept showing me like I am a new earth leader I've known this for a very long time what am I going to do to move forward to allow this collaboration to happen I don't believe there's such a thing as competition because the, in, the world is infinite. The universe is infinite. There is enough abundance to go around for every single person. There's no such thing as competition. The way that Ross teaches, the way that Gary teaches might resonate with some of you. The way that I teach might resonate with others. And that is okay because yes, we could all be saying the same exact thing, but it is okay if one person resonates or the other. And then as I'm, as I kept meditating, it's like, what am I good at? What are my superpowers? Some of my superpowers is bringing people together. I have a lot of energy. I love hosting events. I love facilitating events. I do in-person retreats, virtual retreats, virtual summits. I love doing that. I'm a Leo. I love being the center of attention. I love bringing people <laughs> together. I love connecting people. So we what can tell. I do, yes. <laughs> so what can I do that can bring my strong suits, bring people together and allow this collaboration versus competition. So I kept meditating, meditating, meditating. And while I was meditating, this entire brand new business was channeled to me in this four hour meditation. I literally felt like I gave this example yesterday as I was talking inside Quantum Maximum. So Rahu Ahu, the person who designed, who channeled human design, he sat in meditation for eight days, eight nights, pure channeled this entire system that's been around for, since the seventies. It's a very new system. He channeled everything in eight days. I felt like I was Rahu Ahu, like channeling this entire brand new business from the grounds up to to what it is right now and what expansion alchemy is like the entire the the copy the logo the 
the colors, the teachers that I want on it, everything, like the price points, everything was channeled to me in that four hour session. And I just kept writing and writing and writing and writing. And I've never felt so guided in my entire life. Like mm -hmm. as soon as I saw this, I was like, this is what I need to do. I built this business in 30 freaking days. <laughs> like once I set my goal to this is what I'm doing, like I'm nonstop, let's go. Like Gary was saying yesterday, do you ever sleep <laughs> right now? No, <laughs> but I've never felt so guided. This is exactly the road that I need to be on. So Expansion Alchemy is a divine alchemy school where we come together in the realms of spirituality, personal development, health, relationships, and business. Five of the core of my core values, and I say business last, business slash wealth slash finances, because you need to have all of those other four aligned before your finances could start coming to you. So I have 15 teachers on. Each teacher does one live masterclass a month. And we share our wisdom, share our strengths, collaborate together. It is truly designed on a collaboration where we come together as a community. We are in the rise of the Aquarius, the rise of the feminine. The feminine loves community. I love community. <laughs> so coming together for community, we're getting off of Facebook. We're getting off of Instagram. We have our own separate community that was built for us. And where we come together, collaborate, co-create, co-share, and have 15 teachers on in the realms of those five, those five pillars. We have hypnotists, we have people talking about epigenetics, people talking about the subconscious, the unconscious, health, relationships. I'm talking all about abundance and like embodiment, the embodied divine feminine, the embodied divine masculine as well, where we all rise together. So for a very, very, very low fraction of the price, you get 15 teachers coming on teaching you for anywhere between one hour to two hours. I say two hours because some of the teachers, if they're doing like a deep hypno session or a deep breath work session, it could be two hours. Like the session could be 45, 60 minutes, and then like half an hour for integration, chatting, what came up, and then a QA. So you get like hours and hours and hours of it. So what quantum maxima is please sign up for Quantum Maxima. Gary and Ross are speaking at it today. There's Facebook links below where you can go to the Facebook group and sign up. What Quantum Maxima is a little preview of what you'll be getting inside Expansion Alchemy. Replays from yesterday are available inside the Facebook group. Today will be live. We start in about an hour and a half and then uh, two hours. It's 11 for me right now. We start at one. <laughs> Yep. So in about one, yeah, one and a half hours, more or less. And you get little snippets. All of the teachers that are inside Expansion Alchemy are coming on and giving you a 30-minute masterclass of what they are preaching, what they love, their own magic. So you get a little snippet of their own magic, a little preview. And then if you decide to want to join us for Expansion Alchemy afterwards, you have all free reigns of doing that as well. So that is um, Expansion Alchemy and Quantum Maxima and me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. That is absolutely, I mean, it, I was uh, on some of those, uh, listening to some of those uh, um, episodes yesterday and they were amazing. Yes, all of the teachers, amazing. like, I'm a, kind of what I was saying, like, I'm a connector. I love connecting with people. Like, I feel so blessed for the people that the universe throws at me. Like each person is like, if I put all my friends together, all the people that are inside my community, I'm like, we have the most interesting people in the world. Like it is incredible. A little side story, um, a fun fact about me, I own three world records. <laughs> Don't ask for what, they're all very random. I was <laughs> at dinner and and we were we were just chatting about like random things and we're like this is one of the most interesting tables of people that we've ever had together like between the five of us that are sitting at the table six seven however many of us we own 10 world records together like the people that come into my horizon are in freaking credible 
like amazing. So you guys get such a good slew of teachers, coaches, mentors, healers when you sign up for Expansion Alchemy. Like, Ro look at Ross and Gary. They're freaking incredible. Like, how did I get blessed with them in my horizon? <laughs> Did we lose your audio? Nope, I'm okay, here. Okay, yeah. So um, I like to, you know, point some things out to our audience. Uh, and first of all, we we kind of missed at the beginning. If you guys are still chiming in uh, just now and hanging around, go ahead and drop some comments in the comment section. We are watching and keeping an eye on them. Um, Rose Rosemont says, "Me too. I fully understand that what you're saying. You were changing without knowing." Your guides were pushing you for you to recognize you were going on a different path. And then she says, collective consciousness, triple thumbs. Yeah, you know, and I think that, uh, you know, so in the comments, let us know if when you chime in, as usual, where you're chiming in from. So we kind of get an idea of who's here, uh, whether you're jumping in from the beginning, watching the view, re the replay or catching in the middle somewhere. And uh, you'll also see the links. We'll, set, we'll drop the links in the comment section as well for how you can get involved in Quantum Maxima and uh, come and enjoy the great content that's there. So as I listen to your story, because I, I too listened to the stuff yesterday that was um, that as you were streaming, as I listen to it, I, I, I think there's some great lessons we can extract from that to share with our audience because you know ross and i are always about how do we implement the stuff it's a great story uh you know the and and all that stuff how can we extract from that something that we can recognize and then something we can apply to create change for ourselves from your story right so as i look as i as i hear you uh you know we talk to our audience all the time about a variety of different things one of the things we talk to them about is what we call the six markers of transformation, okay? And six markers of transformation, there's these different experiences or, or, or life experiences or places in life where you can notice a transformation occurring that'll ripple to the rest of your area. So the, the way that it works is you, at the, at the top of it, and I mean, there's transformation can happen at any level, but we have to put some hierarchy to it, right? So there's spirit level, there's identity level, there's belief level, there's capacity, there's behavior, and then there's environment. So for those of you listening, for, uh, for Anya, what happened was she tapped into spirit. It was the first thing she did. Something happened. There were some synchronistic events, which is a whole different thing. We teach about synchronicity and sync portals as well. There were some synchronicity events that got her to a place where she tapped into spirit. And from that tapping into spirit, she changed her identity of who she was. And that shift in her identity started to now open up different belief systems that then allowed a capacity that's different from what she was before and therefore changed the behavior she had and therefore the environment of creating this whole quantum uh, experience that we're going to have, right? So for you, um, when in your life have you used, like had that, to when uh, other times in your life have you used that process to create transformations and uh, create you know something new or or reinforce something you've done um and and gotten you know something that's a, that you feel was impactful in your life yeah so a little backstory on me so i um i had to grow up very fast at the age of 10 um, my dad got into a work accident, which caused him to be handicapped. So I, we were immigrants. I am Polish. I was born in Poland. We came over to America at the age of 10. I was the only one speaking English. So I had to go to all of the lawyer, all, all of the lawyer visits, all of the doctor visits. Like I had to grow up very, very fast mm. learning words that no 10 year old should ever learn. <laughs> um, so I felt like I got robbed a little bit of my childhood which caused me to have a lot of trauma with my dad. And because I had to grow up really quickly, I, I was always very artsy. Um, like all my tattoos I've drawn up myself. Like I do channeled art now. It's really beautiful. 
Um, so I was always really artsy. At the age of 16, I took a my first graphic design class and I'm like, oh, I really want to do graphic design. Like, this is the path I want to do. I know I want to do it. So as soon as I knew that, I was like, all right, what can I do to get to college as soon as possible? Because I need to take care of my family. What can I do to uh, graduate high school as soon as possible? Because again, I need to like start working and start taking care of my family. So I graduated high school early, went to college right away, graduated college early. I had a corporate job at the age of 19, actually 16, because I manifested an internship in corporate America really quickly. Um, so 19, I was making six figures, like way more than any 19 year old should be making. My family started seeing the money I started bringing in and my dad ended up stealing like hundreds of thousands of dollars from me, which caused me again to go down. Not only did he steal my childhood, now he stole all of my money and amongst other stuff that he did to me as well. You can read all about it inside my book, Rebel's Guide to Spirituality. So um, so because I had to do all of that, I, I had a lot of stress and anxiety on me. I was taking care of my family. I had a big girl job at the age of 19. I was also struggling with drugs and addiction and alcoholism at that time, because what else was I going to spend my money on? I, I had, a, I needed to cope. I wasn't in my spiritual self yet. So I was, I had a lot of stress and anxiety. I had an entire decade where I wasn't sleeping. I had insomnia for an entire decade. I had terrible IBS. I wasn't eating. I had celiac disease. Everything that I ate was irritating me. I couldn't go to the bathroom for over two weeks at a time. Um, I like, I was going blind. Doctors could not figure out what was wrong with me. They're like, you're just going to go blind. I have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. I was going blind. All of the stress was really taking on onto my body. So at the age of like 24 ish, I was like, I have enough. And this is just about like when I started getting on my spiritual journey, I was like, I have completely mm -hmm. enough. I was dating a guy at the time and his dad was a holistic doctor. And he's like, Western medicine isn't working for you. Like, why don't you go to my dad and try Eastern medicine? I was like, what do I have to lose at this point? Nothing is working. I am not getting any better. I'm just sick, hmm. sick, sick. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired at this point. So I went to go see him. And obviously the holistic journey is a lot longer than a Western journey. So like I got on, I got on different medications, different supplements, like started doing acupuncture and like, Things started getting a little better, but I didn't have that full belief within myself, that spiritual connection yet, because I wasn't fully on a spiritual path. Like I meditated maybe once a month at this point. And then I came to a point in my career where I was uh, like, I could either look for a new job or do something crazy. And I was like, you know what? Like I'm 25 right now. Let's do something crazy. Like I'm. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I decided I'm going to buy a one-way ticket to Thailand within two weeks of, I like, I decided, woke up one day and I'm like, I have enough. Like, I am done. I have completely enough. I'm sick and tired of arguing with my, with my father. I'm tired of my job. I'm tired of being sick. Like, I need a change. I know that I need a change. And I know that was spirit guiding me that I needed some kind of change. I didn't know what it was. I had no idea what it was going to be. Boy, it wasn't an adventure. <laughs> so within two weeks, I went to my manager. I'm like, screw this. I quit. <laughs> within those two weeks, I sold my car, sold my apartment, put everything in storage, bought a one-way ticket to Thailand, and I've been traveling ever since. It's been seven years, and I've been traveling ever since. I know deep down that was spirit guiding me. I wasn't tapped in yet, but I know that was spirit guiding me because it led me to where I am today. I needed to follow that intuition. I needed to follow that guidance. So while on that journey, that's once I got to Asia, I life in Asia is a lot more expensive than life in North America, a lot more inexpensive. So I started meditating more. I started going to yoga classes more. I started doing Reiki. I started healing mm. myself naturally. Plus I was in the East, like all of that comes from there. So I was like, why not do all of this and start practicing? And that's when I had my first awakening. Once I had my first awakening, like I just felt really guided the entire time. I've had three away spiritual awakenings <laughs> at this point in my life, and I'm sure I will have more. And each one is more beautiful and very difficult at the same time. <laughs> but I've always 
way backstory. I've always been very intuitive. Like when I was younger, um, children are very open to spirits. They're very open to whatever comes to them. I remember seeing spirits, seeing angels, and I would be like, hey, mom, like, I see an angel. She's like, you're crazy. Like, that's just your imaginary friend. I'm like, no, it's not. I see it. <laughs> now I tell her I see angels and she still says, Anya, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, I know, but maybe you understand it now. So I've like ever since I was younger, I've always been very intuitive. Like I'm very clairvoyant and very claircognizant. Once I got sick, all of my powers shut off. Once I started getting back on the spiritual journey, my powers started opening up again. So when I was meditating, when I was doing yoga, like I started seeing again, I started getting intuitive hits. And that's when I started tapping into that spirit, what Gary, you were talking about and, and just allowing that intuition to guide me. I, I hear things, I see things, I know things internally now, like people will, will understand, like, I will say different stories and people are like, what is wrong with you crazy woman? <laughs> But it's all being guided because I trust and we have to have that trust within ourselves because when it's yeah. spirit is taught, I teach intuition now. And a lot of people are like, well, do I know? Is it me? Is it spirit? Like, am I going crazy? Like having that inner trust in yourself that yes, it is your higher power. It is spirit. It is the universe talking to you, trusting yourself. We need to trust ourselves because that's when we start developing that intuition within ourselves. And we could allow that spirit to guide us and we can start reprogramming some of those beliefs and start walking into this quantum version of ourselves then. Anya, why do you think that people have lost this so much? programming society like life the news everything that's going on within us like we are all meant as spiritual beings every single one of us is connected and when I teach intuition I say that every single person has the ability to connect to source connect to spirit it can either be clairvoyant claircognizant clairaudient clairvision like there's many different clairs um there's ones that even like you could smell you could taste there's many different clairs um each one of us has a different hierarchy of which one is our path of least resistance that's what i like to call it and we just need to start start tuning into this like how am i receiving these messages it's it's like oh you got a text be like, play with your, play with some of these things like you your phone vibrates and it's like I get a text. Who is, who is texting me? How are you receiving these messages? Are you hearing who is texting you? Do you see a visual of the text, the person's name? Do you have an inner knowing? Like, start paying attention to that. And society, like, society, like, I could go down the crazy rabbit hole of what really is going on, society and fluoride and all that crazy <laughs> stuff. We like rabbit holes. <laughs> <laughs> gland being decalcified all that crazy stuff yeah. <laughs> but yeah society and programming put like oh it's crazy to be spiritual and this is why i'm so excited for the new earth because that is going to be accepted spirituality is going to come out in every single person and if you don't get on board with that spirituality you'll go down your own crazy rabbit hole of like the negatives and all the craziness that's going on and if you do open up that spirituality, you'll see the truth and the light will always prevail. And it'll be so beautiful when we lead with our hearts versus our egos. Yeah. Well, I, I think that, uh, for example, I was listening to um, uh, a podcast this morning and it was more about economics uh, was the topic. And, um, you know, the host, who's very knowledgeable, a lot of respect for him, um, was talking about how... Um, the current economy that we're going through, which is actually the, the the planet is going through, is basically showing that what we thought was working isn't working. And more and more people are coming to that realization that, you know, this what we what the, the lives that we have lived up until now have always been in this in uh, to serve another someone higher up. You know, they were the ones who benefited, basically. And now that structure is 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 dissolving because people are like, uh, I'm not going to do this anymore. 
this is ridiculous. This is, you know, I should be living my life for me. And, you know, and, and the economists are actually starting to kind of go, yeah, things are kind of, are just, you know, repositioning themselves. And it's, you know, some people will take that in. And as you said earlier, some people will take that in and, and be scared to death. You know, and the only people who should be scared to death are the ones who are actually going to, you know, lose some of their power, some of their control. Everyone else on the planet, the the other, you know, 9 billion, <laughs> you know, 800, 800.9 billion, um, you know, should be rejoicing that those chains are going to be broken, that they are going to, you know, now have the ability to create their own lives. They just need people like yourselves to guide them. It is time for all of us to change, every single one of us. The universe has been really pushing us to change. As a collective, we are all feeling this, every single one of us, because we're all rising as a collective. We're all moving into this new earth together. And it's been challenging for many, many people. I know I'm not the only one that's been going through whatever the heck I was going through a couple months ago. I am not the only person. And it's making us uncomfortable. It's making us think in different ways that we've never thought before. It's making us act in different ways we've never thought about before. Like, how am I? But it's also a really good time for all of us to reflect as well. Look internally like that source that fire that higher power is found within you this is why i sit, sit in meditation for hours on hours on end so i can channel all of these sources and really be guided from an internal source versus an external source and asking yourself questions like how can i be a better person how can i be a better mentor how can i be a better leader how do i step into my new role in this new earth who am i to become how am i supposed to act who am i what am i supposed to do who am i supposed to be asking yourself these questions it's going to be uncomfortable yeah but but growth is uncomfortable we need to get uncomfortable we can't be doing all of the things we've been doing for years and years and years because we saw where that went to COVID, to all this crazy, crazy world craziness. <laughs> we need to start getting uncomfortable and start taking action for ourselves. Because a lot of the times, like we, we just sit on it. How are you going to start taking action and doing the things that the universe source is asking you to do? How are you going to get uncomfortable? Exactly. Yeah, I was I, talking I, with... Oh, go ahead, Gary. Sorry, gonna... So with that, I, I think that, you know, I like to think of it as, you know, what are you... What are you setting for your tolerance level of the type of you know planet you want to live on or person you want to be? Because that tolerance level is going to say, okay, I, I'm not willing to tolerate this anymore. And because I'm not willing to tolerate this anymore, I'm going to step and do something different. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but, but people get, you know, they get lazy. They get weakened by a variety of different things. Some self-imposed, some, as you mentioned, externally. And... And so then they don't have that inner strength, that inner fortitude, or, you know, as we both resonate, that inner badass to say, no, I'm not going to deal. I'm, that is not me or that is not acceptable. There's change that needs to happen. And people need to get to that place where they're not accepting the, the status quo, the normals, and as, as the only option. Not that it isn't. It's not the only option. Exactly. And I, I think that people should look at some of the inconveniences that they're going through right now mm -hmm. as not as something that's that, that that is an inconvenience or something that's like that's bad. It's like, no, this is a shift. This is part of the change. Even though there's there's also change within you, there's change within your sphere as well. And uh, I was having a very long conversation with somebody yesterday about this. And uh and we were just talking about the things in society, just our, our just our current society that are so different right now. And I'm like, yeah, isn't that great? You know, I said, that's good. Adapt to it. I said, because this is, you know, people are saying, oh, it's the new normal. This is going to be bad. I'm like, no, that this is this is a movement upwards. This is this is this is humanity breaking out of their cocoon finally. Yeah. I'm accepting that the earth was round at one point was a new normal. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and people had to adapt. <laughs> exactly. 
Um, I'm reading a book right now, and one of the lines in the book that really stuck with me is, chaos is just the beginning. Chaos causes us to evolve. Yes, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot going on around us. There's a lot going on around us right now, but it is pushing us to evolve, to step into this new version of ourselves, because we need to evolve. We've grown as a society, so why not grow as a person as well? Push yourself outside of your own limits and outside of your own boundaries. Do things that are uncomfortable. Yeah, they're uncomfortable and they're hard, but we need to push ourselves to that boundary. Chaos is just the beginning. Allow mm -hmm. yourself to evolve and grow and embrace the chaos. Embrace it. Love it. Feel into it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's very much. And uh, what I what we see, though, is a lot of people are scared. Very scared. And um, and if if they themselves are not scared, then somebody within their sphere is going to make sure they are scared um, or remain scared or whatever the case. You know, we uh, in our trainings, we call them sentinels. They are the ones who are surrounding you that are pulling you back to their normal. And making it difficult to to make the that 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 push forward. Um, what what is your advice for people who let you just say I can't do that? I just do not have the ability to to do that. What's your advice to them? You can do, be, and have anything you desire if you put your mind to it. Do not let outside circumstances, your own mind, allow you to tell you no. If you want something, go after it. If I can do it, you can do it. Who knew that I would be where I am today? If I didn't take that leap of faith of quitting my job and putting my foot down and saying no more, yeah, I was freaking scared. I went to a country where I didn't speak the language. I didn't know anyone. I was halfway across the globe from my family. I was a 25 year old blonde, five foot tall girl. Yeah, I was scared. My family goes, oh, what if, what if you get raped? What if something bad happens? What if this happens? Yeah, but what if I find myself? What if I find my spirituality? What if I fall in love? What if I, what if I build a new life for myself? What if? We can't live in the what if negatives. There's always going to be a negative. Sure, we can't live in that, oh, what if something bad happens? Well, look at the positive. Like, it's all about perspective. What if something great happens out of the situation? What if something amazing happens? Go right. for it. If you have an inkling of whatever it is. Yeah, it's going to be scary. Change is scary, but it's good. You will be, most people regret things they haven't done versus things right. they have. You will regret it 100%. If you have something that the spirit has been telling you, go after, go after, go after it, and you don't do it, you will freaking regret it. Instead of actually doing it, you'll look back and you'll be like, damn, I'm so glad I did that. I'm a freaking badass <laughs> for doing that. <laughs> Just go for it. Yes, it'll be hard. Reach out to a support system. Facebook is freaking incredible for support system. If you're going through depression, if you're going through grief, if you want to move halfway across the world and do something absolutely crazy like I did, there's support systems for that. Get plugged into communities. Don't, don't do it alone. The new earth is all about community. You don't have to do it all alone anymore. Plug in and take that leap of faith. You will be so damn proud that you did. It's awesome. Very nice. Yeah, and I, I think having the um, support system for that is critical. And that's where quantum comes in, quantum maxima and, and, and all of what you're putting together now having that place where people can get, and that's where, you know, Ross and I have been consistent every Thursday, having tools and resources and a conversation around that, that potentiality, right? And I, I think people need to get more exposure of that and, and, and remember that, you know, if, even if you just tuned in, if you're tuning into, you know, the, our, our live streams every week, well, what about the other 23 hours of today and then 24 hours of tomorrow? Like if you don't have the, the, all the other messages that were there to put you in the in, in the crap you're in, they're still there and they're growing, right? You know, and, and so what we need to do is we need to tip the scales in the other side of the positive, the empowerment, the possibility. And 
you know, that's a big variable, I, I believe, in my life, and I know in Ross's life, too, is that we consistently bombard ourselves with positive, empowering, thought-provoking type stuff in, 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 in understanding that we're not going to take ourselves out of society. We're just going to go into society with a lot more tools, resources, and skills. That, that's it, exactly. To give to so that we become the resource, you know, we become our own empowerment, and uh, um, because it's it's you have the people around you that are going to say no, don't do this, like your father and such, who's going to say no, don't do this, and and we <clears throat> we want to listen to them. But we don't really understand um, where they're coming from. They're coming from, for lack of a better term, a safe place. Okay. I want you to be safe. I'm saying this because I don't want anything to happen to you. But think about that, that statement. I don't want anything to happen to you. Mm -hmm. Like, but I want something to happen to me. That's why I'm wanting to do this. And we have to think of our thought process when somebody is saying, it's like, okay, well, what is it that, you know, do you, do you want me to literally be physically safe, emotionally safe, or do you want yourself to be safe because this is something you never did and you didn't have the courage to take that step and you don't want to go, well, gosh, my, you know, my, you know, my daughter did all this and I never did. So now you're going to live with even a reminder of regret. Uh, and I'm using, I'm just using you as an example, but, um, but this is, you know, these are the questions that you need to start asking yourself. And Gary and I, especially Gary, are all about questions. Asking yourself the question, asking people who are, who are talking to you. Why? What do you mean by that? And then they give you an answer. Well, what do you mean by that? And they give you an answer. And you, what do you mean by that? And delving deep into where they're coming from so that you can better explain yourself or understand, well, okay, I understand where you're coming from. That doesn't resonate with me. I'm going to move, you know, I'm going to continue my, my, my movement forward. Where, where do you, uh, Anya, where do you come from as far as, you know, uh, how to deal with the people who are going to be in our lives, who simply, you know, are going to almost not so much just unsupport you, but try, and, oh, well, you're not going to listen to me? Well, then I'm going to make this even worse for you. And there's going to be people like that. That mm -hmm. is my Correct. first thing. No matter Correct. what we are, um, there's always going to be naysayers. There's going to be people that try to bring you down. Mm -hmm. Um yourself out of those those situations like when the stuff was happening with my father even though he was my father I'm like I cannot be in your energy you are my father I I guess I chose for you to be my father <laughs> but I didn't talk to him for five years I can I just couldn't be in his energy we had no conversations for five years because I didn't want to put myself in that energy so I can be more sick that wasn't that wasn't yeah. part of my intention. I was like, I'm healing. I need to heal for myself. And it's okay. Like, even if it's family, it's okay to cut ties with family. Boundaries. Boundaries are so important. It's okay to say no as well. Even if it is family and you can't yeah. imagine you not ever speaking to this person or for two years, one year, whatever, say no. It's okay to say no. Part of your own growth is learning how to say no as well and Absolutely. surround yourself with the people that do support you. Plug mm -hmm. into communities that do support you. Find friends, find new communities. So I'm from Chicago originally. Um, and whenever I go back home, I have absolutely nothing in common with my friends back home in Chicago. And that is okay. Yeah, I'll grab a coffee with them, a lunch with them to, to catch up. But like, I'm here going down this rabbit hole of like the pineal gland and talking about ayahuasca and plant medicines. And I can't talk to them about that. They're here like, <laughs> <laughs> job, I still hate it. Well, change it. Change it. Change all of this. 
start start plugging yourself into different communities into people that are going to support you another thing is like ask the universe to be shown the people that you want in your horizon i ask the universe to, to guide me to give me people into my horizon every single day and this is how i manifest the gary and ross into my community along with this, these 15 incredible incredible teachers inside expansion alchemy like every day i'm just blessed with more and more amazing people because i ask for it if you want yeah. better supportive people ask for that. It's simple. If you ask the universe for something, the universe has to reply to you. Start asking and say no. Start saying no to the people that you don't want in your horizon and asking for the people that you do want in your horizon. Yeah. Ask and, and, and listen for the answer. Cause a lot of people ask, but then they kind of <laughs> <laughs> listen for the answer. And, you know, because the, even just you, the, the everybody that's here, that's listening now and catching replays, whenever you're catching this, you know, our belief is that there's a synchronicity that occurred for you to show up here to listen to this message at this time. And if it touches you emotionally, that's the source saying, Hey, pay attention. Right. So because of that, um, why don't you share a little bit more about it just kind of because some people who may have jumped on late or whatever, share a little bit more about expansion alchemy, how people can jump onto it and uh, and, and the vision of where we see that going and, and just share that and we can kind of wrap up from there. Well, you know, before, before you go there, I want to I want to let everybody know as well that Gary and I have committed to teach in expansion alchemy for a year. Mm -hmm. so we have already been we have already scheduled ourselves we we believe in 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 uh, uh what ani is trying to put together or is putting together excuse me and uh i mean so if if hopefully that will make you understand that this is this is not just a promo clip of some sort this is like mm -hmm. no this is a movement and this is something that we truly believe in and have committed to so anya take it away <laughs> Thank you for coming to a full year. I am so excited to have you on, and I will be tuning into your master classes as well. So sign up for Quantum Maxima. I know Gary or Ross, they put links inside the Facebook group. Quantum Maxima is the three-day event. It started yesterday, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Even if you're catching the replays, sign up, go inside the Facebook groups. Replays are available. They will be available for a long time. So even if you sign up late and you're watching this particular interview two weeks later, you can still go into the group and get all of the replays from Quanta Maximum. Quanta Maxima is a little preview of what you'll be getting inside Expansion Alchemy. So Expansion Alchemy is a beautiful divine alchemy school where we co-create, collaborate, come together as a community and truly rise and elevate ourselves and our spirits together in the realms of spirituality, personal development, health, relationships, and business. I have 15 teachers on, on staff with me. I'm opening up a school. <laughs> 15 teachers coming on and teaching one live masterclass a month. This can be a masterclass. This could be an integration session. This could be a workshop. Depending on what the teacher wants to do that particular month, there will be a calendar where you can see all of the events, all of the classes taking part. Classes take, take part every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, both at 12 p.m. Central and 7 p.m. Central, because we have people on both sides of the world. So I wanted two different time slots throughout the entire month. You, in all of those realms, Gary and Ross are there for an entire year with me, and we are launching, we're bringing in new teachers three times a year. So this one is right now in November, and then March, and then whenever else is going to happen. Um, <laughs> Live masterclasses. You'll get 15 live masterclasses from each of the te yeah, these teachers um, an entire month. This could be a deep hypnosis session, a deep breath work session. I'll be teaching about manifestation, attracting things, embodiment. We'll be doing some somatic movement as well. Divine masculine, divine feminine. 
it is absolutely incredible. So you can, if you guys are interested already in Expansion Alchemy, reach out to Gary and Ross, ask for their links. They'll send you your links. You guys can sign up. And if you just want a little preview of it, sign up for Quantum Maxima. The links I know are inside the um, inside the uh -huh. Facebook chat. But yes, reach out to them, get their links. Um, you will not want to miss this. They're in there already. So hey, don't you want to be part of this amazing community? <laughs> And, and and so again, we are, it's going today, right? So we started live in about almost an hour, right? And so the, if you want to jump on to, um, jump on to the, the expansion alchemy uh, for that, sort of the, um, yeah, expansion, right? If you want to jump onto that, um, come and check out the, the live presentations and uh, we are on later today, Ross and I. So come and, and check out what we've got. We're, um, we've got a really good presentation coming for you guys today, so. Make sure you show up. I'm excited to have you guys today and have you for an entire year. Amazing. I know. I know. <laughs> All right. Gary, you want to wrap up for us? Yeah. Well, I think that thanks everyone for showing up and uh, we'll be back. You no, know, next week we're not here. We're not back uh, on Thursday Live. We're doing our five day challenge next week. So the, you should have been seeing some posts on that as well. So if you haven't signed up for that, you have that option. Um, uh, and uh, just we'll be we'll be adding more stuff, and we'll be talking a little bit about that in in the stream today too. So uh, make sure you jump onto the five day challenge, which starts on Monday. And other than that, we like to leave you with: we dare you to be exceptional. And the only way to be exceptional is to implement what you learn and learn from what you implement. So till next time, be well, everyone. Thanks for showing up, and uh, have a great day. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye-bye.